Another uh, disappointing VR game, to say the least. This thing has got some of the best experiences I've ever had and some of the worst experiences I've ever had. I wish there was like a place where I could see, you know, like the 15 best PlayStation VR games that are available on PSVR ever. Oh god, how did you get in my house and who are you? What? I'm Chris from Shughead Gaming. I don't know if you know this, but uh, my wife says I'm a pretty big deal. I saw the sign in the air there and, uh, well, I'm here. Oh, Chris from Shughead Gaming, of course. Well, you're a VR expert. Why don't you help me put together a top 15 list of the best PSVR games from the entire PS4 generation? Yeah, man, sure, I'd be glad to help you. I don't just wear this thing to look like an idiot and, you know, carry this thing around. Let's do it. Fantastic, let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you're having a brilliant day today. Now, today we're taking a look at the 15 best PlayStation VR games on the platform from the entire PS4 generation. Now this is a video I've been wanting to make for a while, but I didn't feel like I had the expertise to finish this one off myself. So I have enlisted some help from Chris from the Shughead Gaming VR channel. How are you doing today, Chris? I'm doing pretty good, Josh. I uh, got my PS5, so you know, 2020 is starting to look a little bit better. Now the way this is gonna work is that is that me and Shughead here have put our 15 favorite PlayStation VR games into a list. Each of the games got a certain number of points and then we collated that list and some of them dropped off, some of them stayed on the list and that pulled together our definitive 15. It's an interesting list. There's a few things that are different here that I wouldn't have expected and there's a few things here that I, I, I definitely did predict and then Chris also screwed me on my favorite PlayStation VR game as well. So there's that too. Now this list includes anything on the PlayStation VR platform, every single game is fair game, whether it's free, paid, or other, unlike some people's PSVR lists. Anything else to add, buddy? Nope, I'm ready. Brilliant, brilliant. Thanks for that, appreciate it. Let's get started with number 15. Number 15 on the list is the launch title, Job Simulator. Oh. As I mentioned, Job Simulator is a game that came out of the launch of the PlayStation VR, but it still stands as one of the coolest and most silly VR experiences on the entire platform. The thing that I really love about this game is that you can pick it up and be really silly and bombastic with it without really even needing to know how gaming or VR works. It's one of those games that you can put your mum into and she can quickly grasp the idea of picking up a coffee cup and slinging it across the room to fill a robotic overlord's diner order. Well, it may not be the most innovative thing now in 2020. Back when this thing came out in 2016, it blew my mind and it's still a ton of fun just to goof around in and play with today. Yeah, okay, so I'm not a huge fan of Job Simulator. It just feels like such a dated VR game. And it comes from a time period where the only thing you could really do in VR is just throw things. Of course, it's not without its fun and it's great for first time users and kids and old people, but that doesn't make it top 15 in my collection. Outside of some of the social commentary, pretty much just go from job to job and make hamburgers and throw staplers. So for me, not top 15, but for this guy, I guess. Next up we have Tetris Effect. This is one of the games that kind of went under the radar when it came out, I think. It's it's basically Tetris, but when you add the VR component to it and the musical element to it, Tetris Effect becomes something so much more. <sighs> the perfect pooping game back in the day with my Game Boy. It's, it's something that is really hard to explain and describe without actually trying it yourself, but when you're in there playing it, the rhythm and the way the blocks fall and the music playing all immerses you into this incredible experience. <sighs> Not only that, but in VR, your your senses are completely deprived of anything else, and all that you can see is the Tetris happening in front of you, and it's it's really just quite an amazing experience to play. In all seriousness, though, Tetris in VR is a really amazing experience. When it was first announced back in E3 a couple years ago, I laughed at the thought 
that Sony was scraping the bottom of the barrel and offering Tetris VR as a premier PSVR experience. And boy, was I wrong. Jumping into Tetris on the PSVR really made me appreciate that Tetris was two things. One, it was an amazing puzzle game, uh, and two, it also was an amazing experience. Some might call it the Tetris effect, but Tetris can be an almost mesmerizing and hypnotic experience. And what the developers did here with Tetris is they really doubled down on that whole experience, bombarding you with a visual and music assault. And I probably clocked in some of the longest hours of any VR title here in Tetris. And I'm not even a puzzle guy. PlayStation VR Worlds. I know this might seem like a strange addition to the list, and it's not pushing any boundaries in 2020 either, but as a overall demo or package for explaining what VR is in a single nutshell, this does a phenomenal job of that. This is a great beginner level VR experience as well, being able to jump into a shark tank or a shootout or a mountain luge, all in like this one singular insulated package. The other great thing about this is that it's got the Ocean Descent, which while not the most fleshed out VR experience available, it does so many amazing things and, and allows people to begin to comprehend what VR is in a single 10 minute demo, basically. I think this one shouldn't be slept on. It's, 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 an, it's a really amazing experience for VR and well, it doesn't do some of the things that the latter VR titles on this list do, I still think it deserves a place on the VR Hall of Fame for what kind of ground it broke when it launched with the headset back in 2016. Okay, well Josh and I disagree on this one a little bit. Well, I agree with uh, Josh, the less handsome, less Hawaiian Josh. Yeah, I know VR. Um, I think that PSVR Worlds is mandatory PSVR gaming in the fact that it still has some amazing experiences like the Ocean Descent with the shark attack sequence and London Heist which was almost a proof of concept of the full game that we would get in Blood and Truth. And we got that game because London Heist was so awesome. Outside of those two titles, I don't really think that anything holds up that well. The luge game was never good, and the uh, the space jumping game, I can't remember what that's called, was and is still a barf rocket for a lot of newcomers to VR. Don't get me wrong though, this is great for first time VR users, and has some amazing experiences that work really well for people who aren't gamers. In Death is a roguelike PSVR first person shooter. You play as an archer and you have to progress through these, I guess like a roguelike castle, killing different enemies. It doesn't have a huge amount of narrative to it, but I remember when I played this game, I was blown away by how good the game looked. I was like, is this Dark Souls, but in VR? Yes, Dark Souls. It does have a very Castlevania, demonic Dark Souls vibe to it in terms of like how eerie and quiet it is as you're kind of making your way through this castle. And the crossbow mechanics in this game are second to none. I don't know if there have been enough, if there's been another game that's really tackled the way a crossbow feels when you're playing in VR as well as this game did. It's not the most comprehensive VR experience. Again, there are the inklings of something really amazing here that, that just needs a little bit more to get it to that next level. It's definitely one you should check out though if you have a PlayStation VR headset. As a huge fan of Souls-like games, In Death was a game that was going to appeal to me, but I was not prepared for how much I was going to love In Death. Not only is it gorgeous on the PSVR, but the bow mechanics are first rate. In the fact that the reticule's gone, auto-aim's gone, you just have to get good at the archery aspect. And it feels great for that, because when you drop that headshot at 100 meters away, you feel like such a badass. It's definitely not a game for everyone, as its roguelike game mechanics means it can be a little repetitive with its procedurally generated world. It's basically just one world that you try to get all the way to the end in. Uh, you're gonna die, you're gonna die a lot, but upon your death, you get to come back to your home and you get a bunch of new buffs and also new enemies get introduced to kind of level with you. So the game has a lot of replay value and it's just an awesome experience. Now we haven't included any competitive shooters on this list, so Space Junkies is next, being a competitive first person arcade shooter game for VR. This one is pretty insane and not for the faint of heart, it's not for a new VR player because of the way you have to move so quickly around the environment, but Space Junkies is developed by Ubisoft so it does have the backing of a big publisher behind it. It's a fun arcade game that doesn't take itself too seriously at all and it still has a pretty decent player base even today despite the game coming out a couple of years ago now. Yeah I'm a huge Space Junkies fan and right next to Firewall Zero Hour I think it's by far the best best 
first person shooter that we have on the PSVR. In fact, I'd say it's actually probably one of the top five shooters I've played across all VR. It's basically Unreal Tournament in zero G. Unfortunately, Space Junkies had a rough launch as Ubisoft priced it way too high, uh, didn't put enough content in it, and also did not have move support at launch. All of which they have rectified, so put this one on your game list. Resident Evil 7 is one of the true AAA PlayStation VR games. This game is fully playable in VR and fully playable in non-VR. As an overall experience, this game is pound for pound one of the scariest games on the PS4, but also one of the scariest games in VR. Playing that game and having yourself in that Resident Evil 7 scary house is just genuinely terrifying. And it really goes to show and prove that AAA games can become and can be converted to VR games if enough love and care is taken and transporting them over there. This one had its controls on point, it looked good, it paced well, and it played well. And if you're looking for a true AAA VR experience on the platform, then this is kind of like the only one that translates in that same way. It's a real shame that we didn't see more games like Resident Evil 7 come to PlayStation VR. Yeah, I'll agree with Josh though. Resident Evil 7 is top tier PSVR. I mean, Sony spent $4 million dollars uh, having Capcom bring it to the PSVR in it, and it shows. Fortunately, it's not just a great PSVR title, it's also one of the best Resident Evil games, with a really nice balance of action and puzzles that we really haven't seen in the series since probably Resident Evil 4. Add to that that most of the DLC was PSVR compatible as well, including a new campaign that was about three or four hours long, and was a little more run and gun heavy, putting you in there as Chris Redfield. So definitely a lot of value with Resident Evil 7. However, it is a game that might require multiple pairs of underwear, so keep that in mind. Accounting Plus, this is one of the silliest games on this list. Accounting Plus is along the same idea as Job Simulator where you're following this kind of narrative and I don't want to go into too many spoilers about what happens here but if you're after something just hilariously silly then check this one out. Accounting Plus is de developed in conjunction with Justin Roiland who is obviously the creator of Rick and Morty and the voice of Rick and Morty. You get this insane adventure through VR as you kind of inception yourself deeper into VR. Madness ensues. It's crazy. I don't want to ruin too much about the story of this one. It's really, it really needs to be seen to be believed, but it's absolutely worth checking out. Okay, so I disagree with Josh on this. Accounting Plus to me was entertaining. It's about 90 minutes long, and if you like Justin Roiland, yeah, like that quirky, rude sense of humor is totally going to do it for you. And even though I have a very inappropriate sense of humor, I often find Justin Roiland to be kind of a one trick pony and very hit or miss humor wise. This guy doesn't like Justin Roiland? He doesn't like Rick and Morty? Wubba, wubba, lubba, lubba, dub, wub! Jesus Christ. But despite your taste in humor, Accounting Plus is definitely more of kind of just a, an experience, an assault on the senses. It certainly can be a fun game to just throw your friends into and just mess with them. <laughs> Wipeout VR is the first racing game on our list. It originally launched on the PlayStation 4 and they later patched VR into it after launch and it works so well. Sitting in the cockpit of one of those hover vehicles feels amazing and as you're moving around you just feel that sense of speed as you're sitting in this vehicle hovering around corners and propelling yourself through the levels. Being a Sony first party title I suppose it does make sense that they would put additional care and love into making this thing really special though that can't be said for all Sony first party VR titles. Great experience and probably a game you already own on PlayStation 4 that you just haven't tried out in VR yet. I love Wipeout the Omega Collection in VR and as someone who bought their first console as the PS1 I absolutely loved the first Wipeout by Psygnosis, so jumping into a craft now in VR was absolutely a mind-blowing experience, and it's as fast and as awesome as you think it would be. The five-person team that did this port did an insane job in the fact that they didn't really compromise much on the visuals, whether that be frame rate resolution or just special effects. There's definitely a lot of graphical trickery going on here, but they've managed to cram in the entire collection, including in its entirety Wipeout HD, the Fury expansion to that, and Wipeout 2048, and they're all playable online cross-platform with flat gamers. But it's not one that first-time VR users might want to jump into as it can get a little intense. The second racing game we have on this list is Dirt 4. It's not Dirt Rally 4. Yeah, it's 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 Dirt Rally, man. What do you what do you do? It's Dirt Rally. What are you talking about? And 
this one here is just for good reason. If you have the full setup for Dirt 4. Fine, ignore me. He's right. Listen, listen to him. It's Dirt Rally. You're going to look stupid. Or with a steering wheel and a VR headset, you are going to have an absolutely phenomenal time in this game. The level of immersion that you can gain from holding onto a steering wheel and driving it in VR is really unrivaled. It's second to none and it's, it's definitely worth experiencing at some point. If you're not a driving buff and you don't already have a steering wheel, obviously don't go out and buy one for this game unless you're really after that next level of immersion. Dirt Rally takes the base dirt experience of driving a rally car and puts it into VR. There's not really too much more to say about this except you need to try this one out. So I love Dirt Rally not Dirt 4. That game sucked and we didn't get VR anyways. But what Dirt Rally is, is basically the Dark Souls of racing games. Being a hardcore rally game, this is a punishing game that works well on a controller with a few assists, but it is definitely a game that was designed for a racing wheel. Yeah, who would buy a racing wheel just for Dirt Rally? <laughs> And seriously, what Codemasters has managed to pull off here with Dirt Rally is absolutely amazing and stands as a benchmark for how you do racing titles on the PSVR. A far cry from the anemic content we found in GT Sport, Dirt Rally has all the tracks, all the cars, and all the modes, including the online component of Rallycross where you can race with up to four friends. Anyways, I know rally racing is not for everyone, but this is one of the best racing games on the PS4 and it's in VR, which is mind-blowing when you're sitting inside a car. Electronauts is a rhythm creation game. I don't even know if I'd call it a game per se, as more of a rhythm creation tool. There's not a narrative, there's not a gameplay aspect to this. You just sit in this world and jam out like a DJ. It has some really, really advanced creation tools in here to make some really, really cool jams and beats if you kind of know what you're doing and you're musically inclined. If you're into music games, rhythm games, anything like that, then this is a must play for you. Okay, so Electronauts is definitely my ad on the list. And it may not be the popular opinion, but I think Electronauts is by far the best music rhythm game on the PSVR. I know Josh said it may not technically be a game, but for me, I know Pistol Whip is awesome in its own right as you get to feel like John Wick and totally badass it through the music levels. And Beat Saber, well, it's, it's Beat Saber. And you get to live out your Jedi fantasies while you smash boxes to music. And while it's awesome and super immersive and accessible for a lot of people, to me, Electronauts is a premier VR experience in that it could not possibly be done in anything but VR. So Electronauts is basically a collection of 40 plus songs in which you get to be the custom DJ and just remix the crap out of them. So each song has its own personal DJ layout that allows you to loop songs, take instruments in and out, add lyrics in and out, and basically just make the song your own. You even have like drum pads and electronic harps and things that you can just mess with on the fly. Unfortunately, you can't export your own creations, but I have DJed a couple parties at my own house. Having a good ear for music does really help, but the game has an amazing set of algorithms that if it was a painting game, every stroke would be the Mona Lisa. So in practice, when you're playing, everything kind of sounds good. And it's a ton of fun to just sit there and jam. So tell me what you're thinking of. Now we're on to our top five games. These are ones that both of us kind of voted on in some capacity, or they fell really, really high on either one of our votes in terms of pushing them to the top of our ranking list. Number five is Astrobot Rescue Mission. Astrobot changed how platformers work. It, 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 it completely revitalized a genre in terms of a genre that's been around for decades and a genre that I thought couldn't be innovated on enormously further and did something new with it. Giving you unique perspectives on how to platform, giving you unique platforming challenges, and just giving you an overall fantastic platformer game. This is, this 100% deserves its spot on our top five VR list, but Astrobot is beyond that. I think Astrobot deserves itself as one of the best platformer games ever made, period. Just because of some of the unique things they've done with this game. It might look like a children's game, the marketing for it, branding on it might look weird, but this is a must have if you're a PlayStation VR owner. Yeah, Astrobot 
Chatbot is amazing and it's pretty much platformer perfection and actually manages to out Nintendo Nintendo. Um, I'm pretty sure Miyamoto cries when he plays this game. And Astrobot on the PS5, for as good as it is, is absolutely nothing compared to playing Astrobot in VR. In that that world actually grows around you, and level after level, they just raise the bar. It's just an amazing experience that, unless the child in you is dead, you're probably gonna love it. Beat Saber. Meh. Meh. This is probably the game I've spent the most time with on my PlayStation VR headset. Beat Saber being a very basic rhythm game where you've got two sabers in each of your hands and you have to swipe in different directions as the colored symbols, I guess, come towards you on your screen. This is the one you see a lot of videos about on YouTube and Facebook. Beat Saber took a simple rhythm game concept, but did something unique with it for VR. Now, while it's not the most incredibly immersing game for VR, it definitely does something that I guess couldn't be done without it. It's an experience that I don't think I could get without a VR headset, and that's why I think it really does deserve its place as number four on this list. I know that we've had Guitar Hero and Band Hero and things like that in the past that have done cool rhythm game things, but they've never made you feel as cool as you do when you're playing Beat Saber. I often find myself dancing around the room when I'm playing a song because I've gotten so into it and forgotten exactly what I'm doing. The funniest part about Beat Saber is that while you're in there you feel like an absolute legend holding these sabers and hitting these notes and as soon as you take your headset off and you come back to the real world you realize you look like an absolute fool. Look how cool I look! Look how cool I look! I've got lightsabers! Yeah! Let do is that okay? Is that enough? I like Beat Saber. It's it's cool. I love putting friends in it, and it makes everybody happy. But it's not a game that I return to. I'm not really a score chaser, so the game just got old for me fast. Hence my love for Electronauts and the fact that that was more music creation. But yes, I know I have the unpopular opinion: is Beat Saber is amazing. <laughs> Firewall is a team-based competitive shooter. It's a tactical shooter that is pretty realistic, I would say. It competes very closely to Rainbow Six Siege in terms of how it plays. One team playing as, I guess, heroes and villains, essentially, both with tactical objectives that you need to complete. The unique thing about Firewall is it takes advantage of the PlayStation Aim peripheral. It probably does this better than any other PlayStation Aim compatible game on the platform. Being an online competitive game, it does have seasons, which keep the game alive well past the launch of the game, and it does have a massive community of players who are still playing the game today as well. Hopefully Firewall will continue to see updates and continue to keep people engaged with their PlayStation VR headsets, being that every game is basically unique. Yeah, I definitely love me some Firewall Zero Hour, and I've had countless hours meeting new people online and just making friends in the lobbies. It is an amazing experience if it's your thing. It's not for everybody, it's Rainbow Six Siege in VR, and that means that it's slow paced and tactical, there's no respawns, and in this case there's only one mode. So the game does not appeal to everybody, but if you like it, you probably love it. And it's also one of the best games for the PS4 aim controller, in that if you like this style of gameplay, it's definitely reason alone to buy an aim controller. In fact, I know people who have bought a PSVR and aim controller, just for Firewall Zero Hour. Number two on our list is Rec Room VR. This game here is like nothing else on the platform. Rec Room VR is basically just that. It's a rec room where you and your friends can go and hang out in VR. There's a bunch of mini games you can play. There's a bunch of user generated content you can play. But more than anything else, it's a place where I can put my VR headset on and I can stand there next to my buddy who's in a different country or city or somewhere else in the world than me. We can stand next to each other and fist bump and high five while having a face to face conversation. And I think that's incredible. And it, when I first experienced rec room, I thought I was, I was chalking it up to this cartoony experience. But the reality is it's so much deeper and so much more than that. Rec Room takes this second life concept and it just ratchets it up to another level. When you're sick of hanging out and talking to your friends, you can go and compete in a battle royale mode or you can go and play some user generated content. You can go and have a dance party. 
The options in Rec Room are kind of limitless, which makes it just something super, super special. This is a game that I've spent many, many a night in just hanging out with friends, whether we'd be sitting in like a treehouse, or we'd be playing frisbee golf, or even messing around with charades. There's just so much content built into this game. And the coolest part about it is actually cross-play with PC as well. So if you have a PC VR headset, you can play with one of your friends who has PlayStation VR. Okay, so Rec Room did not make the top 20 on my channel, as I did not include any free-to-play titles. And even if I did, I don't think I'd include Rec Room. I'm just not that social, and on top of that, I don't really want to play with a bunch of squeakers. But Rec Room definitely feels like the origins of the promise told to us in Ready Player One, in that it is a giant social hub in which you can kind of go do anything you want. You can make your own outfits, you can be who and what you want to be. And while I don't spend a lot of time in Rec Room, I have been fortunate enough to host many episodes of the VR Chat channel, which in itself probably exists as one of the most ambitious and innovative things I've ever seen in VR. And that's all possible because of Rec Room and a bunch of really talented people. But this still would not make my top list because a wealth of content doesn't mean great content, and for me this game just isn't great content. But I totally see what he means. And number one. This was our highest voted game between both me and Chris, and for good reason. The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. Now, honestly, if you'd asked me 12 months ago, I would never would have expected that this would be the top game on a top 15 list of PlayStation VR games ever. It's a Walking Dead franchise, licensed property, so that already rings kind of alarm bells for me in terms of, you know, a game. Plus, The Walking Dead's kind of a dying franchise at this point too. The developer is relatively unknown, you know, it, it, there's so many things about this that shouldn't have worked, but they made this game exceptional. This game has better mechanics than, than so many games that came before it on PlayStation VR. It has better narrative mechanics, it has better gunplay, movement, realism. The, the game just does so many things right and it ticks so many boxes. If you're looking for a, let's say, a AAA VR game, not a game that like Resident Evil that's, that's on both VR and non-VR, a purely AAA VR game that is unrivaled in the category, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners is that game. Don't sleep on this one, it is 100% worth the time and money invested into it. You're gonna be spending so many hours playing this game and just being amazed by how good it plays and how good it feels, how much there is to do in it, and just how well built it is. A lot of VR games, like I've mentioned several times in this video, are kind of tech demos of what could be. They have an inkling of something great, and there is greatness there, and there is potential for even more greatness. The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners is greatness now. And that's why it's my most recommended game for PlayStation VR headset owners of the entire PlayStation 4 generation. Yeah, Walking Dead Saints and Sinners is not just one of the best titles of 2020 for PSVR, it's one of the best games of 2020. One of the problems that VR has is that a lot of games, like Josh said, feel like tech demos, or they feel like half-finished experiences where they didn't have enough money or enough time. But here, Saints and Sinners is where all of that has come to together, where you have to go out and loot and survive and craft. And on top of that, it's an amazing action title with a really strong risk and reward gameplay loop built into that. It looks good, it plays good, and it was shocking how well it actually runs on the PSVR. And for all these reasons, Walking Dead Saints and Sinners is a premier VR title and definitely gets my vote as well for number one PSVR game of all time. But there you have it guys, that is our top 15 list of PlayStation VR games for the entirety of the PlayStation 4 generation. Hopefully this video stands the test of time somewhat. We're recording this towards the end of October 2020, so if you're watching this way in the future, hopefully it still stands up. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'd be really curious to get your thoughts on what your favorite PlayStation VR games are in the comments section down below as well. Thank you so much Chris for helping me out with this video. I wouldn't have been able to do it without you. Chris being the VR expert. Chris, where can people go and find your content? Thanks for putting up with me guys. I'm Chris from Shughead Gaming. I'm on YouTube at Shughead Gaming and I specialize in VR with a significant focus on video game reviews. So if you're interested in the VR perspective, come check me out. I'd love to entertain you. And of course, Josh, thank you for inviting me to your channel and, you know, paying for the ticket to Australia. Thank you so much, mate. I really appreciate you being here. Hopefully everyone enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, subscribe to myself and Chris, and we'll see you guys all in the next video. VR, be a game. <laughs>